well, that was embarrassing. <laughs> Chelsea have qualified into the uh, Europa Conference League league phase, which I believe is the new gr group phase. It's a league format. Um, Servette, Swiss team, I'm reliably informed, to Chelsea won. We lost. We lost. We lost the game. I tell you what, man. It's been widely reported that Chelsea are going to need two starting 11s for um, Enzo Maresca this season. Obviously, Premier League. Trying to get, do as well as we can in the our domestic league competition. There's cups. There's this. A competition, the Conference League, which we will be expected to win, by the way, despite losing to Svet. Um... And, of course, the Club World Cup, which is annexed at the end of the campaign. Bro, this was hella embarrassing. Okay? We got slapped up on a potato field. We lost. And they even put on a fireworks display from in the stands. Literally put, literally just decided to have a firework display to, like, mug us off even more. Shout out to Savet though. They do know how to play football on a potato field. We're going to talk about the game here and the ramifications, the player performances, and all the weird stuff in between. Thank you for joining me. Uh, do consider supporting the content if you dig it, man. You can do that by liking. You can do that by subscribing. Hit the bell if you choose to subscribe. Okay, let's get into it. All right, so we were 2-0 up from the first leg at Stamford Bridge. Savet could have scored... A couple of goals themselves. Fair enough, we should have scored more than the two than the two that we did at the bridge originally. But um, they could have scored, absolutely could have scored some goals. Now, I'm going to get it in early here because it's easy to, like, just be really disrespectful to Savet. And I'm probably inadvertently going to be disrespectful to them uh, through this video in terms of how, how I feel we should have done. They do have some historical European pedigree, by the way. So I don't want to be like, there's some friggin', like, farmers out of nowhere. But look. They look like freaking farmers out of nowhere because we were literally playing on a potato field. Uh, massive game for them. They sold out the stadium. Great atmosphere. Um, who knew that, uh, you know, French Swiss footballing culture had friggin', you know, ultras and pyrotechnics and fireworks and obviously beers in the stand, a few projectiles. It's like playing in Eastern Europe for a period there. Um, look, great support, good football at times. But the, like, make no bones about it. The blockbuster story here is Chelsea not being good. I am going to be fair. I am going to criticise Chelsea, right? Rightly so. But, I yes, of course, of course, there are the obvious, you know, variables against our, in the, in, in not in our favour here. This is... What is it? It's the first, it's the fourth competitive game of Enzo Maresca's Chelsea career in what is trying to innovate and change the team, of course. Lots of noise going around the club with transfers and stuff. It is away from home. He's basically playing a B team. That's obviously, like, the team he doesn't preference and the team he's trying to rotate and he's trying to learn about those. And, man, we did not look like there's cohesion there. I like some of the, pl the plays that played but like for example the, the the player that you'll be looking at to lean on is a kin and dewsbury hall in this scenario stinker bruv uh we will go through player performances i think the defense collectively was so poor bad issue terrible uh, i i am looking at that i'm going to show you the sofa score in just a moment for stats and stuff like that but i think Tosin got a 7 rating. I don't think he was very good. I think, think Philip Jorgensen was bad in goal. I think Disassi, you know, sort of won back a little bit of favour towards the end of the game when we were defending a one-goal lead on aggregate. He started defending well, but freaking hell, bro. Uh, Renato Vega, who I do like. Um, I don't think he played well. I did a half. I always do a half-time live stream on Instagram, at Football Yannick. If you want to follow me, it's just like at Football Yannick like that. Bottom right middle, you can see it there on the screen. Go f subscribe to that YouTube channel as well if you want to support my other content. But, um, and I was saying, some people said Vega's playing well. I like Vega. I think he could be an absolute bargain at 8 million, but I didn't think so, so much. You know what? Let's look at the stats then. Here we go. Uh, Servette 2, Chelsea 1. 
Um, let's have a look at the um, lineups. Firstly, it's a it's listed here as a back three for Chelsea. Jorgensen and goal. Benoit Bailly Shield, Tosin and Axel Dissassi. Dissassi completing the back three when Renato Vega inverts into midfield. Uh, Enzo Fernandez, captain on the day, playing behind the attacking four of Noni and Kunku, Dewsbury Hall and Mudrick, and Mark Yu getting a start up front. I just want to have a quick look at the heat map of Renato Vega. Yeah, yeah, didn't really play as much as left back, very much as a left-sided midfielder. And I'm guessing Enzo Fernandez here. Yeah, right-sided midfielder, a little bit more central there. They played a 4-2-3-1. And uh, yeah, the striker scored a goal. Matey off the bench. Uh, what's, what's his name? Uh, and Enzo, and the three Enzos involved today. Uh, Crivelli, I guess he's Italiano as well, scored off the bench as well. <sighs> Mudrick won a penalty and Kunku converted it emphatically, as you can see in the bottom left here. Uh, before the end of uh, the first half, uh, Guillaume Menor scored a goal. Um, it was a good goal, to be fair. Like, Mudrick won a good penalty. It was really well executed by Nkunku. Their goal that they scored... <clears throat> It was actually quite a good goal. Uh, the the combinational play and the finish uh, bottom left um, under the bottom right of Jorgensen. Um, really well executed finish, keeping it low on the deck, far in the corner. It was a good goal and I could bank on them scoring a good goal at home with that support after seeing them, you know, play well at Stamford Bridge. Like, whatever. I expected them probably to score a goal and that was a goal worth scoring by, you know, whatever accounts, especially with a rotated Chelsea side. We saw substitutes with nice to see Tyreek George making his Chelsea debut. Clearly, um, as you can see here on the left, clearly fancied by Enzo Maresca. Caicedo and Nico Jackson come on. So this is kind of Calvary, you know, trying to get short. At this point, we're still two goals to the good. Uh, we're not playing that well, you know, try and do better. But mate, with the hair band scores. And they go ahead, and then they nearly score again, and we're hang hanging on. And uh, we even throw on Cole Palmer because we're panicking. Shout out to Savet who played well. Now, look at this attacking momentum bar on the left here. This momentum for Chelsea, I don't think is... I mean, we could have scored goals in this period in the second half here. We could have done. And this is pretty much keeping the ball in the corner and trying to kill the game. But as you can see, this blue period here, this is when we probably should have scored again and made safety. To be fair, we should have scored more around the penalty as well. Um, we did have chances. In fact, let's look at the stats, shall we? 67% possession away from home. Uh, in the first half, we had three shots to their one. Uh, sorry, three big chances to their one. Right, that is worth more than one goal. You want to be getting big chances are like you're supposed to be sort of scoring. Well, if you're a good team, you're scoring big chances. You know, to only score one is poor. Um, uh, yeah, to be honest, like, not, not hella dominating. And in the second half... They had, you know, they matched us, basically. Uh, probably, yeah, more clinical. We did have 12 shots to their nine, but they were way more clinical than us. Oh, my giddy aunt, mate. All right. Um, let's talk about player performances and whatnot. I think Jorgensen and goal was, was okay in the second half, but then, sorry, in the first half. But yeah, second half, he didn't look good. I actually think on the winner, of in terms of the game on the night, I think he was pretty poor. Uh, Jorgensen. Obviously, it was a really bad pass out from Benoit Badish Shields to create the chance, but I think it was poor from the goalkeeper. Um, I think Badish Shields pretty darn awful generally in this game. Um, he's not going anywhere. He's staying at Chelsea. He is the left footer that they want to back up, Levi Colwell. All right, have a season. Let's see if you can find any form again. But this is hella worrying. Now, Tosin, um, I'm just going to look at Tosin's individual stats. My, For me, in the eye test, I don't think he was that good. But he, okay, so he did win one out of one of his ground jewels. He won 75% of his aerials, which is good. He is hella tall, and he had 95 touches. He didn't complete any of his long balls. Uh, and, yeah, and, yeah, I mean, maybe he did okay. Maybe he did okay. But Benoit Badishu, um had a, a pretty... He won some aerials. He won actually four out of his five aerials. He lost possession ten times, Badishu. For a centre-back, that is awful, awful. You're allowed to lose possession when you're like a dribbling winger because you take chances, it's, you know, and that's what you do. When you're a centre-back and you get into double figures for possession loss, that is 
bad. He only completed 50% of his long balls, uh, which is not good passing. Yeah, he did not have a good day, Benoit Badia-Shield. Disassi, I feel like he sort of redeemed himself a bit later. His passing wasn't good. He did complete 100% of his aerial duels, 4 out of 4, which is good, and 75% of his ground duels, which is good. He made three tackles, uh, two interceptions, and a block shot. So to be fair, Disassi did, you know, sort himself out afterwards. But uh, it was a collective failure defensively it's, uh, um, in terms of how we look. So the team just weren't playing well. And I do want to understand, it was a very poor pitch. I'm joking about it being a potato field, but it was very, very poor. Uh, Enzo Fernandez, captain of the night. Captain of the night. Complete five out of seven long balls. Meh. One out of two crosses. Uh, he didn't win many ground duels. Three out of nine. Interestingly, I don't see him as a guy who's going to win aerial duels, but he did win three out of three. Not enough creative um, passes here from um, Enzo Fernandez playing 63 minutes. I want to see more creativity, and that's what you kind of expect from him. Now, Renato Vega. I am high on Renato Vega generally. A only 82% pass accuracy for a Chelsea team is poor. Uh, he completed one out of four long balls he did create one of the big chances but uh he he lost every single one of his ground duels and he lost possession 14 times from midfield um and he was dribbled past twice as well he yeah uh, he had a bad game bad game from renato vega i like him i obviously like the kind of his jib he spoke he speaks really really well he's a cool dude i think you know that moment against um wolves when he turned from three players pressing him and progressed up the pitch he looks really good there now and again and he cost eight million quid but this was not a good game from him and also what i don't like about renato vega is this recurring theme you may have seen it a few times where he literally just like falls into players and pushes them over and concede fouls he's not going up to them and pushing them he's sort of like running and running into them and pushing them over and it just looks pretty amateur hour i think there is a player in there i don't think he's ever going to be a starter for chelsea but i think he's going to be a very useful player but he needs to be better than this you know if we're losing to Servet and qualifies for the conference league you know everyone needs to have a look at themselves um, Nkunku, probably our best player on the day. He obviously scored the penalty. Um, he was he completed a hundred percent of his dribbles. He got a couple of shots on target. He won lots four ground duels. So he was getting in and amongst it. He nearly, you know, he tried an overhead bicycle kick as well. Like probably our best player on the day. Quality shining through. No issues with Christopher Nkunku. Um, Noni Madweke, of course, man of the hour or the fourteen minutes against Wolves. Not great from him either, to be honest. Um, he missed a big chance, which is poor. Um, but he did he did do some really good passing actually. So he did hundred percent of his crosses, hundred percent of his long balls. Oh sugar, he made four key passes, which is actually really really good. If you make two key passes in a game, if you average like two key passes in a game, you know people consider you like a creative player. And he's a tricky winger, so if to four. Yeah, all right. Shout out Nolly then. Maybe my eye test comparatively to the to the stats. He completed four key passes, which is excellent. Uh, hundred percent of his crosses, hundred percent of his long balls. Uh, he didn't win many ground duels, but you know. And see, like, so okay. So Nonny Madweke lost possession ten times. He's allowed to do that up front. Not Benoit Badia-Shield at centre back. Um, right, Mudrik, most frustrating player in the world. Of course, he won the decisive penalty that saw us. <laughs> qualify against Savet. So, well done for that. He is... Oh, man. Yeah, he's got low, low uh, passing accuracy. Yeah, low crossing accuracy. Low long ball accuracy. And won three out of his seven ground duels. Yeah, really poor from Mudrick. You know, re done really well to win the penalty. Had a really good dribble later on. Um, you know, and then also put it in row Z. He gets the ball robbed off him when he's just standing there needlessly because he's not paying attention. He's not tracking back. He is the most frustrating player because the stuff that he does badly, you can coach. And then if you coach that, the stuff he does well, it's natural that, you know, you can't teach. He's got that most frustrating player in the world. Like, I just wouldn't start him for any game at the moment that we need to win. I mean, we lost this game, bro. Um, so let's talk about Kieran and Dewsbury Hall then, shall we? Because this is the kind of player you're supposed to be leaning on. Um, 
I think he had an absolute shocker. Maybe if you gave him any benefit of the doubt is he knows the system, he knows what he's supposed to be doing, but nobody else knows what they're doing, so no one's in the right place. I don't know. I'm trying to look at his stats here, what he offered. He, he, he attempted two dribbles. He failed both. Uh, he won two out of five ground duels, so he was losing all duels. The majority of his duels he lost. He lost possession 15 times. 1-5. Yeah, he didn't do anything good in this game. Uh, I'm not obviously writing him off, uh, but yeah, very, very poor game from him. Mark Yu up top. He sort of Mark Yu did it, didn't he? Uh, a couple of good moments. Bullied. He gets, he's just a bit of a bull. Um, I mean, yeah. He is what he is, isn't it? He gets if he gets a goal, it would be interesting. If he gets a little bit of confidence from goal scoring, uh, you know, like give him a couple of chances to score a goal. Everything he does in between, like he can beat up centre backs a little bit which is mental seeing as he's only 18 um but he also um doesn't get beaten up himself he can't get bullied so i really like him um you know there is probably a chance he goes on loan tomorrow <laughs> if we bring in a striker oh no i can't see that happening now but yeah i you know don't really want to judge him cole palmer got a high rating despite only playing 16 minutes he completed 100 percent of his crosses uh he had a couple of shots um he completed three dribbles pretty decent uh he did miss a big chance when he hit the woodwork and that's registered as a big chance missed but he looked all right coming on he did all jackson looked a little bit lazy when he came on uh, it's tariq george looked quite bright he looked like a bit overexcited but i mean <sighs> look man it's a bad look it's embarrassing isn't it though and Savet will feel like it's an opportunity missed. They absolutely could have beaten Chelsea over two legs. They could have done. They absolutely could have done. Um, but they didn't. So they, we are through. And we can never let this happen again this season. Because we got to win this competition, man. Um, we will come up against better teams than Sivet. And fortunately for us we will be playing on better pitches as well which will be massively it will bode in Chelsea's favour compared to what we played on today or this evening but um it does like it, we, we're through we're through the qualifying it would have been a massive story had we not qualified for even the league phase or group phase whatever you want to call it if we'd if we'd been eliminated from the conference league qualifiers now it's not there's not much money in it but of course if you win you're in the Europa League and um that's still a, a competition better than in Europe where we're playing this season. So it is a little bit of backup there. And it's a trophy. And also, you know, Chelsea could sell the whole... We've won every single... We, we're the only team in Europe now to win every single trophy available. And I do... I would genuinely enjoy that. I know you could be like, well, we don't want to play in that competition. Fine. We don't want to play anymore, but we've won it now. And now we've got every single one. So that's nice. Um, yeah, I never want to see that, that... I will see that team play again, but they need to have a big look at themselves and find out what went wrong and why they couldn't play together and why they were all at sea and why they were missing chances and you know the players that came on they just kind of like not not feeling like they they, I, I don't want to question the attitude of like a Cole Palmer but there was a little bit of like you know like what are we doing <laughs> and Savet it was like their like cup final anyway whatever we're through it's an embarrassing result we should be laughed at we will be laughed at but you know we'll forget if we forget forgotten in a couple of days time if we win the first couple of games of the conference league league phase people will genuinely forget about this and be like well whatever and you know if we beat crystal palace like we should on the weekend uh it will be i was gonna say it's not a winning streak because we freaking lost to Severe. <laughs> anyway let me know what you think comment down below hopefully see you back here soon and of course, deadline day tomorrow, so I'll be covering it very closely. All right, peace.